Mario games are filled with iconic characters that are known worldwide. Everybody has heard of Bowser and the Goombas. But there's also another enemy that everybody has heard about. The Koopa Troopa. The most famous turtles in history, next to the Ninja Turtles of course. But how did it all start for these little turtles? How did they change throughout the years, gameplay and design wise? Well today we will take a look at the Koopa Troopas and find out what happened throughout the years. It all started long ago in the year 1983 with the game Mario Bros. Now in this game we see Koopa Troopas, but they had a different name. In the game Mario Bros they are called Shell Creepers and bear a huge similarity to Koopa Troopas, but cannot be jumped on. Shell Creepers come in three different colors to indicate their speed. Green is the slowest, purple slightly faster and red is the fastest. The Shell Creepers were replaced by Spinies in most remakes of Mario Bros. Likely so players know not to jump on them. So, the Shell Creeper was the ancestor of the Koopa Troopa. After this they started with the creation of Super Mario Bros. And a few changes were made to the Shell Creepers. Including the ability to jump on them in order to damage them. The Koopa Troopa's name comes from Bowser's Japanese name Koopa. Which derived from a Korean dish of the same name. The last name Troopa is taken from the word Troop. In reference to the Koopa's role as foot soldiers in Bowser's army with the A likely added on to make the name rhyme. Koopa Troopas are often referred to as turtles, but they specifically bear resemblance to tortoises, a type of turtle that dwells on land. Koopa Troopas are not a type of aquatic turtle, they lack key features for this, for example the webbing between their toes. Additionally, the Koopa Troopas ability to remove their shells is not true to any type of turtle, although popular culture often overlooks this fact. After a couple of changes, they were ready to appear in the brand new Mario game Super Mario Bros, a 2D side-scroller. They serve as foot soldiers in the army Bowser uses to invade the Mushroom Kingdom. If jumped on, a Koopa resides into its shell, and can then be jumped on and used as a projectile with which to attack other enemies. There were two types of Koopa, the green one and the red one. Green walks in one direction until it's defeated or falls and red patrols a set area without walking off any edges. And they were also used as Bowser's imposters. For example, the one of World 2's castle is a Koopa Troopa. Besides that, they are essentially the same in terms of gameplay, use and design. There was also a variation to the Koopa Troopa, the Paratroopas. These were the flying units of Bowser and were mostly used in sky-themed levels. They formed some sort of an obstacle for the player and with one jump they could be taken out. But a second species of Koopa called Hammer Bros also debuted in this game. Now this was something new. These enemies are the elite of Bowser and were used as some sort of mini bosses in the game. They could be a real challenge. The hammers formed some sort of a wall of damage and you had to time it to get through. This worked really well in a game where a lot of people run at full speed through a level because if you wouldn't pay attention you would die. Maybe it was made for this reason, so that people wouldn't just run through the level and ignore everything. So they didn't change a lot from the previous game. The only thing that really changed is that you can now take them out by jumping on them. After this Super Mario Bros 2 was created, but this was a bit of an odd one. And also had no Koopa Troopas, so let's skip this one and go straight to the third game. The Koopas didn't change a lot in this game. The only thing that did change is that you can now pick up the shells and kick them making them a more useful weapon. Besides this, two new Koopa Troopa variations were added. The Big Koopa Troopa and Dry Bones. The bigger version of the Koopa Troopa was added to the mix because it's harder to dodge and to intimidate the player. It's huge, making it harder to jump over and it's also a bit of a surprise to the player since they have to deal with this huge thing. Besides this, it's the same as a normal Koopa and only needs one stomp to be taken out. But the Dry Bones are a different story. They are skeletal versions of Koopa Troopas and are mainly found in towers and castles. These undead Koopas often collapse when attacked, but they soon revive themselves and become normal once again. So you can't really kill them, making them a constant threat to you, keeping the tension high, especially when you're trapped with them on a platform. But there are certain power-ups that permanently kill it. After this, the biggest change to the Koopa Troopas was made. It changed everything. The Koopa Troopa got a completely new meaning. 
that changed it all. Super Mario World brought drastic changes to the Koopa Troopa. In this game, Koopa Troopas finally started walking on two legs and wearing shoes. Also, like in Mario Bros, stomping on Koopas ejects them from their shells, rather than causing them to hide. An ejected Koopa will slide out of its shell wearing only a t-shirt, and will crawl back to its shell after being temporarily stunned. The game also features blue and yellow Koopas. A Koopa that re-entered a yellow shell would flash and turn invincible and chase after Mario, sliding around inside the shell. If Yoshi ate a red, blue or yellow shell, they would gain a different ability until they swallowed or spit the shell out. Eating a flashing shell gave all three abilities at the same time. This was the moment that the Koopa Troopas became more human-like, and they added a great easter egg-like feature with the Koopas running around in their t-shirts. Over the years, starting with Super Mario Bros. 3, Nintendo started to add more variations and features to their iconic enemies like the Goombas and the Koopa Troopas. They wanted icons for the series, video game enemies that everyone knows about. And to do this, they had to expand on them. With the Koopa Troopa, this was easter eggs, funny features and variations. But this was only the beginning. After Super Mario World, the Koopa Troopas made the jump from 2D to 3D. Koopas made their first 3D appearance in Super Mario 64, where they appear as rare enemies found in two levels. They appear as members of Bowser's army, which have invaded the portraits of Princess Peach's castle. In this game they are non-aggressive, and they added another funny feature to the Koopa Troopa. If jumped on or punched, the Koopas will be knocked out of their shells, which Mario can then ride on in a manner similar to surfing. This shell surfing ability was a fun little feature which added to the Koopa Troopa, but they also did something else. They added the very first friendly Koopa to a Super Mario game, named Koopa the Quick. Mario first meets Koopa the Quick in Babom Battlefield after defeating the King Babom. He is seen at the entrance of the stage and will challenge Mario to a race from here to the top of the mountain where the Big Babom originally resided. After you beat him, he will give you a Power Star. This was the very first friendly Koopa Troopa, and after this more and more friendly Koopas started to appear in all kinds of games. Like Paper Mario, Mario Kart and Mario Party, but these are all spin-off games. So they essentially started to give the Koopa Troopas a character, some background story, a face of their own. You could finally interact with them and find out what kind of creatures they really are. After being absent from Super Mario Sunshine, Koopa Troopas next appear in New Super Mario Bros. Their role is exactly the same as in the other side-scrolling Mario platformers, but they added a new power-up related to the Koopa Troopa. There's a multiplayer battle stage with a single blue Koopa Troopa reappears for the first time since Super Mario World. If Mario attacks it, he can take the blue shell and become Shell Mario. This form lets Mario swim faster and gives him the hammer suit-like ability to dodge attacks of enemies when he crouches. As long as he keeps ducking, he will be safely protected from most enemies, but there are some exceptions. So Mario essentially gains the abilities of a Koopa Troopa, which is an interesting twist. But in the games following, they didn't really add new things to the Koopa Troopa. In some games, the Koopa Troopa even started to devolve. For example, in Super Mario Galaxy, where they started to walk on all fours again. They added one last little fun feature in Super Mario Bros. 2. In this game, when Mario touches a golden ring, Koopa Troopas turn golden for a time. When these golden Koopa Troopa shells are tossed, a path of coins is created behind them wherever they go. Additionally, whenever a golden Koopa Troopa hits an enemy, a certain number of coins are added to the player's coin count, depending on how many enemies are defeated. It started as a simple turtle and over time it became a real icon with multiple features and types. And in the end, it became one of the most known Mario enemies ever. Great that you watched the entire video, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to watch more, click the annotations on the screen right there, and um, hi there. So you come here more often, do you? Well, this is the outro screen, so I don't have anything left, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pineapples are great, I agree. But um, I gotta go now. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you lovelies in the next video. Bye.